Good afternoon, everyone. This is the doctor. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. It's almost 70 degrees, which is just melting me down to my core. Us Pacific Northwesters cannot handle the heat. I've got the air conditioner on, and it's killing me right now. We are going to be going over all of the news that just came out in JP, or at least we're going to be covering the two new units that were announced. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, let's hop in and talk about Luasa and Tidus. Tidus is going to be an MR unit with Dark Element, and he is going to look quite sassy there. He's going to be a Paladin, Red Mage, or Viking. And can I just say, is this going to be my new Husbando? His mastery ability is going to be Pierce and Missile Resistance plus 10, AP Consumption minus 25%. He is going to be a tank style character. HP coming in at 2400, which is pretty high for an MR unit with an additional plus 70 on there. He also gets HP plus 15%. TP 107, AP 100, Attack 163, which is a little bit low if you consider he only gets an additional plus 10 attack. Magic we don't care about. Agility as well is very low at 48, and that is very, very low, and there is no additional on top of that. So he is going to be slow, ladies and gentlemen. Dexterity and luck pretty low, along with move and jump being low as well. He gets starting AP plus 2. He does get defense plus 6, which is going to be very substantial. And where he gets really interesting is he's a tank that's fo focused on pierce and missile resistance. So his innate missile resistance with his mastery ability is going to be 30% with an additional 20% pierce resistance. He's going to be weak to slash and uh, magic. So he is going to be an anti-gunner tank, and I think he's actually going to be very successful with that when we start going over what passives his jobs give him. His TMR, Sword of Iwaz, is going to have a chance to inflict attack down. It gives defense 10 on a sword, which is very cool. We actually haven't seen anything like this before, and I could actually see this being very viable um, on a whole swath of units. So definitely an interesting TMR. I'm not sure how I would quite utilize it, but very cool to see that defense up on a TMR and on a weapon at that. He does have tons of passives, and I think the ones you're going to be using the most are going to be Holy Knight's Protection for raises max HP and defense. Since he is a physical damage tank, mostly focused on Pierce and Missile, you're going to get Paladin Guard here. And then, of course, Unyielding Protection, which is going to add another 15% resistance to Missile, putting him at 45% resistance to Missile damage. You could make him a little bit more tanky towards magic, but I think with his innate magic down capabilities, he is not going to be very successful with that. His main abilities are going to be Saintly Healing, Blade Bash, Saint Cross, Immortal Spirit, and Saint Wall. There's nothing too critical here. What's kind of lacking is some real defensive utility, though. And so for that reason, you're going to see a lot of people wanting him to sub Paladin so that he has access to Taunting Blade, Sentinel, and Divine Grace. Other than that, with his low attack, I don't see him subbing Viking. I don't see him subbing Red Mage ever. Uh, maybe sub red mage for something with tower, but he doesn't even get access to jamming thrust. Uh, he does get SNO, which is pretty good in Kira, but I really see him going for primary paladin sub. And even then, I would argue as an MR tank, he's a little bit of an underperformer. I kind of would want something at the point JP's at, just a little bit more viable, I feel like. Moving on to Luasa, you guys. Luasa is a beast of a unit. And if you like Lucia, if you like Frederica, if you like any of the double gunners out there, Luasa is going to be the unit for you because she's like, she's like if you took Lucia and Victoria and put them together and then Lucia was suddenly shooting Victoria's spears at everyone. That's pretty much what Luasa is. So she's a dual gunner main. Uh, job two gunner, we don't even care about. You can throw that second job out the window. What we really care about here is that third job, soldier sub job on a gunner, everyone. For those of you who don't know what that means, we'll go ahead and go over it here in just a minute. Her limit burst is going to be a two hit fire large to targets within area and lowers agility for three turns. Not too bad. Very similar in a way to Lucia's limit burst. I'm not sure I would be using this a ton. 
Her TMR Assetia gun is going to have HP 167, attack 150, accuracy 15, and crit 7. Not sure this is the best, especially since you're missing out on that missile attack plus 15. I'm going to say this is a skip for her TMR, because we even our Raz Algethi plus 5 is going to be significantly stronger than this. And let's get into the meat and potatoes, everyone. Her mastery ability is going to be attack plus 10%, Ice Killer plus 15% on top of what she's already doing against Ice Units. So you know how good Lucia is against Earth Units? She's going to do this except against all the Ice Units out there. Her HP is going to be 1800, so it's a little bit low. Her attack, though, is the 7th highest attack in JP at 282. She gets an additional attack plus 20%, an additional attack plus 39 that is so crazy, y'all. She is going to have so much attack. It's it's beastly. Her agility is at 59. Now, do remember that ranged attack is based off of dexterity as well. So she's going to have 193 dexterity plus 70, which is ridiculous. Her move 3 and jump 1 is like, eh, okay, we don't care too much. Critical rate plus 18. She's not going to be a critical build unit, but it's nice to have that anyway. She's probably going to be firing from either a higher range or a higher elevation. So maybe, you know, maybe you'll get some crits more often than not. She has innately, everyone, 20% slashing resistance, 10% piercing resistance, no weakness to missile, only 5% weakness to magic. She has 20% resistance to wind and 10% weakness to water. She is going to be incredible. And where she's really going to shine here is when we get to her passives, everyone. So her dual gunner main commands are going to be rapid fire split shot, firing stance, which is going to raise her missile attack and defense piercing rate. She's going to be the third unit in JP to get quadruple shot. The other two being Lucia and the other one being uh, Swimsuit Lilith that just came out. She's going to have access to dual trigger. And then she has some amazing sub jobs here. And you're probably just going to sub her dual gunner so that she has access to smoke screen. You could sub regular gunner on her, but I, I wouldn't recommend that right now. I think... You really just want to sub her dual gunner. I don't even have the abilities for regular gunner sub listed here because I think they're irrelevant. Her, She's going to have access to predictive fire, which is going to be a preemptive strike when physical take, taking physical damage. That's going to be the counter that you're going to want to set on her. She gets access to missile mastery, which is really good, right? But we're just going to throw that out the window because we don't care about that right now. She gets access to Tune Up, which is the best passive in the game, in my opinion. So it's going to give her base agility an increase, and she's going to get base defense piercing. And then we switch over to her soldier sub and see that in her soldier sub passives, she gets self-sacrifice. And for those of you that don't know what self-sacrifice is, it is the highest attack raising technique passive in the game. So that's going to be a 70% passive increase in her attack and keep in mind she's the seventh highest attack based unit in the game she also has defense piercing which is going to make even more attack more valuable because she's able to going to pierce defenses getting that attack plus 70 percent she has a base of 280 attack that's essentially like adding plus 140 attack to your unit or even more, actually, that's 50. So hold on, what's what's 70% of 300-ish? About 70, 140. So it's about adding 210 attack to her, you guys. Just, just think about that. If you had a unit you could add 210 attack to, it's ridiculous. Like, if you think about Victoria right now, Victoria has one of the highest attacks in the game, and she has access to setting self-sacrifice. And personally... I don't set self-sacrifice because her attack is already over 750 and she's already one-shotting opponents. So imagine a gunner probably approaching anywhere between 750 and 900 attack with self-sacrifice on with a uh, missile attack plus 15. I mean, she's going to devastate opponents. I mean, Lord have mercy. If you have an ice unit on the field, they're dead. Agrius? Shoot, you're probably going to one-shot Agrius. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so overall, I would say these two units, well, Titus is pretty unremarkable. 
I think, oh my god, I can't even remember this girl's name. Hold on, we have to go back because I have to get her name. Luasa. Man, I am not going to be able to say her name ever. <laughs> I think Luasa is going to be absolutely incredible. And I think Titus is just pretty MR standard. He's got some interesting things going for him. But Luasa is the first fire unit that I'm really like, holy shit, I have to have her. Like, yes, we have Delita, you know. But man, Luasa is where it's at. She is going to be Bay. If you guys aren't already planning your waifu right now, um, I know Trino out there, who is a double gunner in our guild, is probably just drooling at the concept of having a sub-soldier gunner on his team right now. Probably already the double gunner comps are figuring out how to put her with Warrior of Light or whatever it is that they're doing right now. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the sneak peek of some of the units that are coming out in JP right now. If you are new to the channel, make sure you drop a comment down in the YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. You can always come check us out in our Discord at dig.gs Discord. We always appreciate new people joining our community. We have almost a thousand people there that are pretty readily engaged and we're pretty casual. We're not going to be stuck up for the most part. Um, but make sure you come in, hang out, and we're a pretty warm community. I do stream every night except for Mondays and Thursdays, so make sure you come check me out. Tuesdays and Fridays are my late nights, and then the rest of the week I stream 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time, and hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. Have a great rest of your week, everyone.